Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well with the new release from On One of their Photo Raw 2025 update. Uh, all the new features in there are really cool. Hope you're having fun exploring them. In my last video that I just did about that product, I hit on three uh, different features that I think I'm gonna use a lot, which are the depth masks, uh, the edit color feature or filter, and the match color filter. And what I thought I would do is, in this video, walk through how I'm using those three plus some other tools in combination to really kind of hone in, control my edit, and get the result that I want. That's what we're doing today. Basically a walkthrough of using these new features and filters on a photo. Let's go ahead and hit it. This is a uh, fall landscape from Colorado. It started life like that, and thanks to the brilliance of Brilliance AI, it now looks like that. And so what I'm gonna do is start out by using some of this cool new stuff and the first one is a depth mask. So what I wanna do is add dynamic contrast to essentially the foreground area. So it defaults to these settings, which are fine, but of course it's hitting the entire photo. Not for long, that's what the masking is for. I, I open the masking menu and I'm gonna click the little depth mask icon and it will go in and analyze what the depth is. And if you uh, click the goggles, there you go, there's my depth. Uh, the stuff in white is getting more of the adjustment uh, fading to gray in the middle, and then black in the back, getting none of the adjustment. I wanna revise that a little bit, and that's where levels comes in. So I'm gonna come in here with levels and tighten that up a little bit so that essentially I'm getting rid of the sky and just keeping most of the foreground. And so now this dynamic contrast is applying in the trees and the mountains, but not in the sky. So before and after, it gives it a little bit of crunch, a little bit of punch, which I like. And while I'm there, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this mask, which is this icon right here. Click Copy Mask, and I'm gonna add a filter. And this time, I'm gonna add Dynamic Contrast again. And what I wanna do is go ahead and Paste Mask, which is that icon. So I just painted the exact same mask in at the exact same place with the exact same settings, but I want the opposite of that. So I'm gonna flip the mask. And that's a way to use it is if you've already masked the entire uh, foreground because of the depth mask, you could flip it uh, by copying and pasting and inverting to get something that's a bit more in the sky. Now again, this needs to be refined a little bit, so maybe I'll come in here and take it down like this and tighten that up a little bit, but basically what I wanna do here is, and I think that looks fine as far as demonstration purposes go, is just kinda remove some of the dynamic contrast to soften that up a little bit. Um, I could just mask the sky entirely, but I actually wanted to blend it a little bit because I think the stuff that's closer is gonna get uh, because it's closer and you can see it better, it's gonna look crunchier to you. And that'll fade over time, even in these distant uh, mounds. They're not gonna have as much of that dynamic contrast look uh, to your naked eye while you're standing there uh, as the foreground would. So using the invert of that depth mask, I think worked out well here and soften up the sky, but it also soften up a little bit of that distant mountain. It works for me in this photo. It's just something that you could experiment with if you'd like to. And that's one of the beauties of depth masks is, and one of the reasons I'm using it so much now is just because I very often thinking, gosh, I just need to edit the foreground. And I would, in the past, usually just use a, like a linear gradient to do that. The depth mask is actually perfect. Uh, now I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna go play with another one of the new ones, which is edit color, which I'm loving. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the little eyedropper and I'm gonna grab this orange in these trees and it finds the color range for me. If I click that glasses, you can see where that color range exists. A little bit on the mountains, a little bit in the sky, but mostly those trees. And so what I wanna do here is I wanna take the hue and I wanna make that warmer. I want more saturation and I want it brighter. So I'm basically just uh, kind of moving up all three of those sliders, right? The H, the S, and the L, hue, saturation, and luminance. So with edit color, I was able to quickly identify that color click in, grab it, and then make those adjustments. So before, there it is before, and after, gave it a little bit richer orange tone, a little bit more saturation, and a little bit brighter. Uh, but I'm gonna do something else again with Edit Color. It's a really great tool, I've been using it a lot. So I'm gonna open that filter again, click the eyedropper, and this time I'm gonna come over here and grab these greens. And if you look at the um, goggles, you can kinda see, it's kinda hard to tell, but because that green, that dark green, is so close to kind of a gray that it, it's hard to tell, but it did grab some green. And all I wanna do here is take this lightness down. And so I'm basically dropping the exposure of those greens to create a little bit more contrast in the image, the difference between the brighter and the darker parts. And so the, the green stuff that's already kind of dark is getting darker, whereas the orange and yellow stuff that was already kind of bright, I made it warmer and brighter. So I'm playing off the warm and cool, but also playing off the light and the dark. 
So if you look at the before, there it is before, and then after, there it is. A little bit more contrast in the foreground, which I like. And I'm going to do one more thing with Edit Color, and that is click on that, get my little eyedropper, and come up here and get the sky. And all I want to do is take the saturation down slightly and the luminance down a little bit more. So a little bit less saturated and a little bit darker. It's pretty gentle. So if you look at the before, turn that off, and the after, I'm not even sure how well you can tell. I may go a little bit darker just to create that a um, little bit better visibility. Let's try that again. Before, you can see it a little bit better now. Before and after. But what that's doing, and notice it's also picking up some of the uh, blue in the trees there in the distant mountains. But again, all I'm doing is creating contrast, darkening that blue, which makes it stand out a little bit more against some of the bright and the warmth of the clouds. Okay, now we're going to add another filter, and this time I'm going to get Color Balance, which is just a great, great tool and one that I've used and loved for a long time. I want to add a little bit of warmth into the midtones, maybe not that much, maybe something about like that, and maybe a little bit into the highlights as well, and then maybe a little bit of cooling into the shadows. So maybe something about like that, but that doesn't look that great, and so what I want to do is apply that a little bit more gently, and the way I like to do that is with a luminosity mask. Not a new tool, neither is color balance, but both are great uh, for different reasons, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and use this little light bulb here in the masking menu, Create Luminosity Mask, and in just a moment, it's created. And you notice the change in the photo uh, pretty immediately, and that's because, let me show you the mask, black conceals and white reveals, and shades of gray vary, right? And so the stuff that's white or lighter in this gray, which is mostly the sky and the clouds, a little bit of the top of the mountain, it's getting more of this effect and the stuff that's darker, which is uh, less mask intensity, if you will, is uh, getting less of it. And so I'm actually going to revise this a little bit, kind of play with this mask, maybe I'll go this way. Yeah, something like that. So it's really just hitting that kind of area. And so now what I've done is if you look at color balance before and after, before and after, add a nice little warm tone to the mostly the brighter parts, which was the, uh, the highlights and the midtones with a color balance and a luminosity mask. And having done that, I'm going to use one more tool, and that's the other new one that I haven't gotten to yet in this video, and that's Match Color. It's super fun, and uh, just gives you a lot of control and fun stuff you can do. Uh, as in my last video, uh, I'm going to use the uh, reference image of my own that I previously loaded, which is this very, very colorful uh, sunrise, or excuse me, sunset on the Oregon coast. Uh, and it doesn't look that great, but and of course, you have all these controls here. So I'm going to take the, con uh, the color and the luminosity down. I'm going to take the contrast up. And then once again, I'm going to go ahead and just apply this with a luminosity mask, simply because I love luminosity masks. I love the control that they give you and the ability to really fine tune these, uh, these edits into certain parts of the photo is just kind of awesome. So this is a slightly different luminosity mask than the last tool. Not so different that I could have just probably copied it from the other one, but um, I guess I just like to create them, and it's kind of habitual at this point. But every time I uh, create one, I then come to levels and just kind of move them around a little bit, experiment, see what works. But I think that looks good where the majority of this color match is going into the sky and a little bit of the top of the mountains and not so much in the trees. And that is purposeful, of course, uh, because I want some of that color, this yummy kind of, uh, these, let me close the masking menu, this yummy kind of uh, pinks and, and that kind of stuff. I want some of that in the sky, but not too much. But I don't really want so much of that in the trees. The tree, I love the color of the trees. I just want a little bit more umph in the sky. And I actually think I'll take it down just a tiny bit more. So it's pretty subtle, but you can use things like luminosity masks with match color so that you can control not just the amount, but also the placement of that color match and where it's happening in the photo with a mask, in this case, a luminosity mask. So before and after, it's slightly lighter, a slight bit of color change. It's pretty minor, and that's because I controlled it so much with the luminosity mask. But that's an example of how I'm using these tools to take a photo that started like that, and it now looks like that. And that's multiple tools, right? Dynamic contrast twice using a depth mask and an inverted one. Uh, three different versions of edit color to allow me to uh, pick specific color ranges and adjust those. That was the orange in the trees, the green in the darker trees, and the blue in the sky. Then I did a luminosity mask with color balance to give an overall kind of color tone or color look to the photo. Uh, and then match color to do a little bit more with that 
controlled also with the luminosity mask just in the brighter parts of the photo. But you can pretty easily and quickly take a photo that, honestly, it was a beautiful sunset. I don't really need to do a lot of these things. It's just fun to kind of experiment with. But before and, of course, after, nice color impact, pretty quick, very easy. And uh, that's how these new tools work in on one. I'm having a lot of fun with them. I'm sure you are too. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care and until next time, adios.